Hello everybody, my name is Benjamin Bloom and I've been waiting all week for some championship news and absolutely, bloody typically, um, the news drops while I'm in the middle of a drive from Bedfordshire up to Liverpool, so I'm in the wonderful surroundings that is um, Sandback Services, somewhere off the M6. Um, as I was driving up to Liverpool, um, a Twitter notification popped down on my phone, and I very safely, while I was driving, glanced across at it, and it said, Martin O'Neill has left Nottingham Forest, and I kind of started to get my head around that, and then 18 minutes later, another one pops down saying Sabri Lamushi has been appointed Nottingham Forest manager, almost like that was already set up, hey, but um, again, just staggering stuff from Forest, um, who just seem to go through managers like absolutely nobody's business, so um, we've got a firing or a leaving, whatever you want to call it, to talk about, and a new manager to talk about. There's a couple of good companion pieces on the channel to this. Um, if you type in um, Benjamin Bloom, I talk Karanka, you'll see my reaction when the last Forest manager went, which was only in January, Karanka. And I also did a piece with fellow YouTuber um, for Forest, Mr. Dorr, entitled is Nottingham Forest unmanageable or something to that effect? And I think we might have been onto something, look at this, because Mr. Marianakis has struck again and Forest have changed managers once again. So if we roll this back about three years, maybe two years even actually, uh, Philippe Montagna is there, he comes and goes, um, Paul Williams is there for a while, if I'm getting these all in the right order, Mark Warburton is there for a cup of tea, half a season, Karanka then takes over, he does the back half of a season, then the front half of a new season, and then here comes Martin O'Neill, returning European Cup winning club legend, pitcher all over the walls at the city ground, Brian Clough, um, link to him, in he comes, 19 <laughs> games later, and he's gone. Um, perhaps I should have seen something coming when Roy Keane, his assistant, left maybe five or six days ago, but hey, this is Roy Keane, um, anything's possible with him, he could have got out of bed the wrong side the following morning, he could be off to go and do a managerial job, so um, that didn't ring the alarm bells it should have, but... It should have rung some alarm bells, yeah, because O'Neill has gone now and Sabri Lamushi has come in. So, look, I don't want to be wise after the event. I was a little bit sceptical um, about this appointment to begin with. And you can trace that back to my video. I said I'm not sure how this is going to pan out on the basis that O'Neill um, has not done well with interfering owners. Think of Robert Chase at, when he was at Norwich, Randy Lerner at... Aston Villa, or rather not saying interfering, but where he disagrees with a learner, he just gets up, um, takes his ball and goes home. And I just felt that um, his best work was over 10 years ago. And, you know, the championship is a slog and a hard division. And I just really didn't see it working. So Neil came in, um, changed a lot of what Ito Karanka did. We went to these strapping centre-halves, um, Milosevic and... Ben Luan, um, Grabin was sort of injured and then not in the team. Um, Danny Carvalho, the big signing, not Danny Carvalho, Yao Carvalho, sorry. Um, the big signing was just not used at all. Um, it all looked very, very um, unstable. I saw Forrest a couple of times. I did see them win um, against Derby in the East Midlands Derby game, but that was very much early headed set play goal and, um, you know, kind of intensity and defending and such the like. But um, Forest fans did still seem to be invested. I know Forest fans all still do turn up in their numbers, and I've been following, I think, 20,000 season tickets sold as per usual. Forest um, always draw big crowds. Plans for the Peter Taylor stand to be doubled up and you know the capacity to grow rather a lot and this old boys managerial team you thought okay let's see what they do next season well no not happening at all I would suggest reading between the lines that um, this is just a clash of philosophies between uh, Keane and O'Neill and Marianakis um, and He's acted, as we know he's prone to do, and as we know Forrest are prone to do. So, O'Neill has gone. Um, first question for people watching um, in the comments is, um, was this doomed to fail to begin with for the reasons I've kind of stated, or has this been 
sort of cut off too soon. Um, I was dubious. It didn't seem a good match, and it has turned out that way. So, um, any thoughts on the O'Neill firing and the O'Neill rain would be appreciated in the comments. Let's talk about Sabri Lamushi, who is a Tunisian midfielder who I used to sign quite a lot on Football Manager when I was younger, probably when he was playing for um, Monaco, attacking midfielder. Um, he has managed the Ivory Coast national team. Um, he's managed in Qatar and he's managed ran in France. So, fair bit of experience, international experience, but hey, so did Martin O'Neill. No English club football experience, although I believe Wren got to the Europa League in France. Um, so, he's got the European profile um, that Marianakis presumably likes the owner there. Um, I can't profess to tell you how he's going to play or how he's going to shape Forrest up, what he's going to do. Obviously, um, O'Neill did bring in some players. I know some of those were loans, so maybe they just disappear off. Um, you look at the assets for Forrest, and it's pretty much Joe Lolly and Joe Lolly and Lewis Graben if he can get fit. So doesn't appear to be a massive amount there to build on. I know they were big fans of Colback, and he's gone back on loan as well. And then there's the question that there's O'Neill's players, there's Karanka's players. Is he going to use Carvalho, the big signing that just didn't get used? So this all seems to me a bit of a mess, to be quite honest. Um, there's even probably Warburton players left over as well. So you've got the signings of three different managers there who have none of them been there more than a year um so it's really going to be a new broom job and um again like i always say unless he's going to be given two years and there's some planning it would expect a lot for someone to come in without english football experience or championship football experience i know that's not the be all end all of it all but to take the warburton players and the o'neill players and the karanga players mold them all together against teams with parachute money and forest don't although their commercials good like i've said you know they draw big attendances and they do have a rich owner who has spent in the past um it would be expecting a hell of a lot for someone to immediately come in and make that bunch of players in that environment competitive stranger things have happened but lamushi needs two years basically um and whether he gets that honor under marianakis is a different matter entirely then You've got the matter of FFP, which is probably going to start to creep up on Forrest with those um, big investments of Graben and um, Carvalho last year. We know we work on a three-year cycle of 13 million losses each year for three years and the 39 million. So, um, Lamushi has not got a lot of time. He needs to get it right pretty quickly. He's got a trigger-happy owner. Um, he's got a disparate squad of um, different players, all accumulated by different managers. Um <laughs> This looks like a pretty hard job. So um, he's going to have to really go great guns to get Forrest up in that top half. Uh, to be fair, Karanka had them there. Um, and I, I think they must have been about fifth um, when Karanka went. And it all dropped down and um, they were away away. So you could argue that they weren't miles and miles away. But you've then added just a whole layer of turmoil. A whole nother six month managerial period different players and obviously this FFP thing is going to inform what happens spending wise and, and with outgoings as well particularly with someone like um, Lolly so I do think it's a more difficult job now than a year ago for Karanka so let me know what you think in the comments um, obviously I wish Lamushi good luck and I'd like him to prove me wrong but this looks like a tough job if he's only going to get um, a year to be in the top six um, like a lot of forest managers seem to do. Um, so in the comments um, what do you think of the O'Neill reign? Was it doomed to failure? How do you think Lamushi's going to do and um, what actually are the chances of him under Marianakis with a big spend last year in FFP probably looming, no parachute money. What are his chances of getting um, this Forest team moving fairly quickly and um, up in the top six where two-time European Cup winners, Nottingham Forest, kind of expect 
to be, really. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Sorry, I've just quickly got my thoughts on this journey. I'm now onward to um, Liverpool, so hit that subscribe button. Please get involved in the comments, especially if you're a Forest fan. I am neutral in this, so I would um, bow to your superior knowledge in the comments, and um, I'll read all of them and um, listen to what you guys have to say. Hit the bell for regular notifications as we start the um, friendlies, and the transfers are amping up now. Cardiff in action, um, Bristol City in action, the transfer market. I'll do another video on that probably tomorrow. Follow me on Twitter at Benjamin Bloom, and I will see you all very, very soon. God, Forrest.